Welcome back to Mao Meow Music. Thanks so much for hitting that bell and subscribing for more content. <laughs> One question that often comes up when owning a cat is, what is my kitty saying to me? I can hear its tender muse, but I cannot decipher its meaning. So today, I'm answering messages that you guys left on my voicemail about your kitty communications. So let's start with Deb in Topeka, Kansas. Here's what she said. Hi, Brent. Love, love, love your channel. This is my cat, Sugar Baby. She sounds like this every morning at 3 a.m. What do you think Sugar Baby's saying to me? Thanks. Well, Deb, thanks for calling. I listen very carefully to Sugar Baby's cries, and here's the translation. P. I have to go pee. I've got to go pee, pee. So maybe you should clean out that litter box a little more often and help her out. Now, here's Gage in Sacramento, California. Hi, Grant. I love your channel and your music. Every time I start to shower, my cat Barnaby does this. <coughs> what in the world is she saying? And can you sing kitties on my shoulder sometime? It's my favorite. Thanks, Gage. I want to hear that one more time. Yes, that would be your cat praying, actually. Yes, he's saying, thank you, Lord, he's bathing. Thank you, Lord, he's finally taking a bath. Yeah. And you can order kitties on my shoulders through my website. And lastly, here's Shannon in Ashtabula, Mississippi. She says, Hi, Grant. I have 16 cats, each whom I love very much. But one of my cats, Honeysuckle, sits by the window and makes this sound. <coughs> what do you think she's saying? And can you send me a sweatshirt, please? The one that says, all cats go to heaven. Thanks. Samantha, I'm sorry to say this. But your cat is saying, help, please help, anybody, somebody, please, help me, she's crazy. You might want to look into getting a kitty therapist for your little feline, so she can feel better about the trauma you're inflicting on her. Well, that's all the time I have for today. <laughs> thanks, guys, and thanks for leaving those messages. And now, welcome to Valley Kids, or as our feline friends may say, Kate and Carson, welcome back to the challenge of the week. This week's game is called Head to Head. It's a simple but fun challenge where you two go head to head with a dozen eggs. Now, this is a simple game where you only have to do one thing. You find the egg that is boiled because each turn you have to pick up an egg and crack it on your head. Some of the eggs are hard boiled and some are still raw. And the first one of you to smash two raw eggs on your head loses the game. Any questions? Yes. Um, can, I don't want to do this. <laughs> now, Carson. I already have to squeeze an egg. I'm scared. <laughs> All right, are you ready to play? It doesn't matter because we're beginning started in three, two, one, let's go. Now for the first time ever. Grant Palmspaw, recording artist and YouTube star, releases his greatest hits collection, Feline Feelings. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's full of cute kitties that I call my own. Some are black 
And some are white, some are calico, that's right. And they're in my home. A recording like no other you've ever heard. You don't want to see me petting other kitties. If you want to sit in my lap just like you did before. Don't throw up. Don't scratch me. Don't keep nipping other kitties. I can't help petting my sweet kitty. My mom and dad say I need a day. Says I need a life, but I can't help petting my sweet kitties. And kitties on my shoulder. Kitties on my shoulders makes me happy. Cat breath in my face can make me cry. Grandpa. Like you've never heard him before. Order your copy today at meowmeowmusic.com. And they're in my home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't share, so call me crazy. In a world full of felines And every night I lie in bed With kitties dancing in my head A million cats are keeping me awake I think how fluffy they could be A vision of their smell so sweet A million cats is what it's gonna take I want a million cats for the home we're gonna make. All right, Caden Carson, here we go. Remember, once you touch a cup, you cannot change change your mind on which one you want to do. Kate is going to go first because she's the girl of the group. I knew you wanted to, Kate. All right, Kate, just pick one. Remember, there are four that are not boiled and what is that eight that are boiled all right she's going with that one i hope you feel good about this kate lean forward three two one Ouch. did it work no lean forward and try it again oh that is definitely a hard-boiled egg. Good job, Kate. You can just set it on the ground, Kate, once you're done. All right, Carson's going with this one. Oh, I hope he feels good about this. Three, lean forward. Three, two, one. Oh, that is hard-boiled as well. Great job. Okay, here we go. Kate, it's your turn again. Three, two, one, choose. There it is. Lean forward, please. Oh, she does not feel good about this. Lean forward. It's, it's okay. Three, two, one. Oh, that's a hard boiled egg for sure because that sounded like it hurt. Great job. All right, Carson's turn. He's going with the big one. 
That one looks good, looks good. Lean forward. Three, two, one. He doesn't feel good about this. Wow, that is the hardest egg I've ever seen. Let's see, here we go. It's hard boiled. Wow, that is a hard boiled egg. <laughs> Very hard boiled. Kate, it's your turn. Three, two, one. She's going with this egg. Carson thought the last one was raw. That's what Carson thought though. No, I didn't feel it. All right, here we go. Kate, lean forward and break it in three, two, one. Does it hurt? Yes! I'm sorry, I didn't know it'd be like that. Clearly that's a hard boiled egg though. You can smash it on the ground just real quickly. There you go. That's hard boiled. It is. Yes! All right. Wait, she got to do on her head. Oh no, lean forward, lean forward. You got it now, you got it. Here we go, lean forward, Kate. Three. Oh no. For some reason, <laughs> For some reason, it would not break on Kate's head, but now it is broken. All right, good job, Kate. All right, Carson, you gotta pick one. Kate's got one broken. All right, Carson, your turn, here we go. Three, two, one. That's a hard boiled egg, good job. All right, Kate, your turn. Time to choose a cup. Which will she choose? All right, Kate, lean forward. Three, two, one. Oh, that's a hard boiled egg. Great job. Oh, you can see the yolk inside. Amazing. Carson, your turn. Kate's only had one so far. It's now time for Carson. Carson, you might get out of here with no yolk on your face. Oh, he does not feel good about this. Three, two, one. Oh, that was definitely a raw egg. Oh, Carson, use that paper towel and wipe your face a little bit. All right, Kate, there are four cups left. We know we have broken two raw eggs. That means there are two left. Whoever gets the next raw egg on their head is the loser. Here we go. Kate, take a, take a, make a choice, take a cup. She's going with that one. Oh, she thinks she knows. Does she know? Not a hard All right. Oh, you think it's hard boiled? All right, lean forward. Three, two, one, go. Oh, you are right. That is definitely hard boiled. All right, Carson, if you can avoid, this is the case. If you avoid the, hard, the raw egg, then Kate automatically is going to lose because the next one will probably be hard boiled. I mean, raw. All right, Carson, here we go. Make your choice in five, four, three, two, that's the one he chooses. That might be a hard boiled egg. He's wondering. Three. Two. One. Oh no, Carson! That was the raw egg. And that means Carson loses. You still wanna do another one? Okay, but that means you might get egg on your face. Kate's gonna go for another one, even though she doesn't have to because she already won, but she's gonna try it anyway. Here we go, Kate. Three. Oh, you're trying to find the hard boiled or the... Oh, you found it. Oh, no, it's on the floor now. All right, guys, good job. Congratulations to Kate for winning. I'm so sorry, Carson, but you are the loser in the game head to head. Well, we are back in Matthew chapter 13, where Jesus tells seven different stories or parables to explain how his kingdom works. In today's passage, Jesus tells two different stories, but each of them share a common theme. So I want you to listen as I tell the story and see if you can guess what the common theme is. 
The first story is about a man who's walking through someone's field one day when suddenly he trips on something. He looks down and realizes just beneath the dirt there's something sticking out. As he digs in, he opens it up. It's a small box and inside are the most valuable treasures he's ever seen, worth millions of dollars. The man knows immediately what he needs to do. He takes the box, he puts it back under the dirt and covers it up so no one else can find it. Then he runs to find out who owns this field. Once he finds out who owns the field, he goes back home, he sells his house and everything in it. He takes all the money he gets from selling his house, he goes back to the owner of the field and says, I want to buy your field and I'll give you all this money for it. The man gave up everything he owned, but because he did that, he now owned a treasure that was worth millions of dollars. The second story is about a businessman. And this businessman every day would go to the market and look over the booths where traders would sell valuable gems. On this particular day, he was looking for pearls. He loved to collect pearls and then sell them at a better price. As he went through the market looking at all the familiar booths he usually attended, something caught his eye. There at a booth was a pearl that looked slightly different than the rest. As he got closer, he examined the pearl and recognized it. It was a rare pearl, a pearl so rare that it was the most expensive pearl in the world. He knew exactly what he needed to do. So he left the booth, he ran home, he told his wife, sell everything we own, including this house. And I'm sure she was very confused, but she did it. And after they had sold everything that they had, they took the money, ran back to the booth and said, I want to buy the pearl, this pearl and I'm willing to give you all that I have. And that day, that man gave up everything he owned to get one thing that was more valuable than anything he ever owned. So what do these two stories have in common? Well, you probably picked up on the fact that both stories involve men who were willing to sell everything, give up everything they have to get something that was even more valuable. So how in the world does this teach us what Jesus' kingdom is like? Jesus is trying to tell us that his kingdom is valuable. In fact, it's so valuable, it's worth giving everything up that you own and have in order to be a part of it. When Jesus calls us to follow him, he's actually also calling us to leave certain things behind. And it's a hard thing to give up your dreams and wishes and comforts in life and follow Jesus. But what Jesus is telling us in these stories is that when you see the beauty and value of the kingdom, you know it's worth giving up everything that you have. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 19. He says, whoever has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. In other words, the kingdom of Jesus is worth everything you have. But when you decide to surrender your whole life and everything you have to Jesus to follow him, it'll be the best decision you've ever made 